Hello ponders. Just gonna do a short video of my progress with the pond because it's at quite an important stage. I've got the bog filter part working and I thought I'd let you be able to see what I've done. Um, adaptations to my vortexes. I'm gonna fit uh, overflow. It's gonna go into there. Then I can drain. I've got a drain there. So I can basically, if I want to, where it'll overflow. If it ever rains down there, I'm going to build a sump. But if I do full drains and water changes, I can put my hose on and water the garden. Or if it's clean water into the drain, I suppose. I suppose you're not meant to do that, I don't think, with sewerage. But if it's just pond water, I can't see a problem with that. Um, well, at this end, I've changed the configuration, it's going to change again, but I put two pumps in there. So instead of that one pump feeding both of these, 5,000 litre pump feeding for the skimmer and the pond, I've actually got two pumps now one directly for the skimmer and one directly for the pumps. So instead of 5,000 litre per hour, I'm turning over 10,000 litres, but I'm yet to just to temporarily I've teed it, teed them in. So they're both on the same one return pipe. Look, return pipe comes up and over back to the pond, and you can see it rippling in the water. Look, quite powerful. I quite like that. But that pipe is going to be feeding the bog filter. So I've got to decide what I'm going to do with that. Ideally, it wants to be from the filtered water because this second chamber. It's got biological in and it's got a vortex brush in for the big particles, debris, and obviously the, the most particles settle in the first chamber, which I dump off every day. Um, but I'm contemplating the skimmer pump connecting onto that pipe and feeding the bog filter and then that pipe will be turned off, it's returning now and then if the bog filter's turned off I can return that water back into the pond so if you need to maintain that I can turn it off and then we'll keep the water flowing into the pond now what I was going to do was then, so that would be the skimmer feeding the bog filter which I thought was a great idea because that filters big particles anyway I went to a koi shop and he kind of put me off a little bit because he said what will happen is if that collects any uh, algae or anything and pumps it through that will build up into the bog filter hence why all those upstands are going to have uh, a cap on so I can clean them out if I need to so every leg has got its upstand been expensive to do that as but I just thought necessary anyway he said oh, I'll be fine you can do that but it's kind of put me off that design now. So short term, I'm going to leave the two pumps feeding one return, and it's going to be feeding the bog water, bog filter, bog plant filter, active plant filter, and back into the pond. And I'll regulate those two and see how much volume the bog filter needs to be effective for the perspex waterfall I've made or runoff. And then I can decide then what I'm going to do. I mean, the skimmer water, I might decide later on separately and just run a shower off here. Or you know, a backy shower. Or there's another name for something else. And I can regulate the water through it and just, you know, trickle it through and have a return as well. But we'll see. So that's most of the coping stones are done. I've gone for this. Limestone, natural limestone is quite nice. So let's walk round here to a bit of a building site. There's a the bog filter, and there's the pit I've made. Lined it, it's full of crap in the bottom. Now, what I'm going to be doing is I can get this in on my own. Just bear with me a moment. Okay. So here we go. That's in. And under here, uh, this 
there's just slots that I've cut in every four inch. So there's my manifold. And then on the top, push that down there. There's the waterfall I've made. The run off. The only disappointing thing I'm a bit disappointed about is the block work wasn't quite level. It, f it fell here. So I've had to build this up with silicon. You can see it through the perspex. A bit cheated off because I was in bed last night thinking about it. And I could have just run a bead there on this front edge, down the edge, and down there. So all you'd see is a bead around the edge. You still see it, I suppose. So that's what I thought at the time. I got a bit carried away with the silicon. I've had to bed it and level, level the blade. So what I didn't want was the water coming out and flowing right in the corner more than this side. Yeah, that's that in there, but hopefully it'll get algae on it and go a bit green and discoloured so I won't notice it. And then these, I would have glued the top part in. Well, there'll be caps. Just a cap that I can unscrew off. And that's going to go on each one. Got one for each one, look. So the water's going to come in there, down, trickle through my gravel, and out there hopefully, that's the plan. There's my stone, I've, sealed, I've glued all the edging in, that's all sealed. And if this ever, I'm worried about these slots blocking, I'll leave the pump on, turn all the other, all the other outlets off, so I've just got the pump on this, and then, so there's more pressure, and then I could just pump it, see if it just causes a bit of action to clear the debris, or turn it off altogether here, Open the far end one up because I've got one here. Hold up there, and then just I could just open that one up, put my hose through there, blast water down that line, cap that one off, and then blast turn that tap off there, put the hose on there. That'll go through there, and I could just open that tap and then do and then do it on a series and clean it all. So the guy at the shop says this all, if I'm not careful, any of these ports block, you can get dead parts and that creates, I don't know, anaerobic or something like that. And that's what's bad for a pond. So that kind of put me off because I was just going to put cap ends on the end here. So they came along, cap. But then because of that, he advised that cost me a lot more money because I've had to all these sections but it's better for maintenance I suppose because in the future I've got to dig down and take all the manifold out to clean it I might want to get away with doing this the only problem is you don't know that do you if it's blocked or not even with the caps here but you've got a better chance if you put a nose down there and unblock in from this end don't you or push any particles out then you have well with nothing at the bottom so just thought I'd do a quick video to show you that section because I've got this part done now and the coping stones and the fat and the water and the runoff and the pumps and the next one will be when this is filling up I'm going to wash my gravel I don't going to do that now I've got about eight bags to wash it's going to be a nightmare but it's got to be done and then yeah next time when it's filling I've actually had my nitrogen and my ammonia spike on my pond. So I've been doing big water changes. The overflow will help me do a trickle in, trickle out system to dilute the water on water changes. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Please subscribe if you like. No, please definitely subscribe and please like. Thank you.